Welcome to this episode of Shaping Your Sound, where we explore the different types of effects used in audio production. This time, we're looking at EQ. EQ is short for equalization, and it's a process that adjusts the balance of frequencies within an audio signal. EQs can boost or attenuate specific frequencies to change the tone of your recordings. You can use EQ both to fix problems or for creative results. Careful adjustments can eliminate unwanted noise, bring airiness and clarity to vocals, or stop instruments from clashing in your mix. All sounds have their own frequency profile, a unique combination of pitches that your ears and audio equipment can detect within the range of 20 Hz to 20 kHz. Understanding frequency ranges within this spectrum is helpful when manipulating audio signals in music production. So before we start looking at specific EQ plugins and techniques, let us explore the different characteristics of these frequency bands. The Avid Multiband Dynamics plugin can separate signals into frequency ranges, so we can hear what's happening in these bands. From 20 to around 250 Hz are the low frequencies. This is where you'll find the sub bass and bass that adds weight and power to the music. Moving up to the low mids from 250 to 500 Hz, we get the fundamental notes of many instruments and the warm and rich tones of the voice. This range also tends to contain room resonances that can sound boxy or muddy, so need to be treated with care. The mids going up to around 2K is where a lot of the action happens and is full of essential harmonic content. This range dictates the presence and punch of sounds like guitars and vocals. Our hearing is particularly sensitive to the upper mids where we perceive much of the clarity and definition of sounds. This area contains the bite of guitars, the attack of a snare and the articulation of vocals. Boosts here can enhance intelligibility but can introduce harshness. The high frequencies above 4K carry the air and sparkle of a mix, including the brilliance of cymbals, the shimmer of strings and the breathiness of vocals. Careful EQ in this band can lift the liveliness of the music, or if reduced can soften overly bright recordings. There are various types of EQ and filter plugins, some which emulate classic hardware, or add particular character to your sounds, or have specialist functions. We'll mainly focus on the general purpose type of EQ that you'll find standard in any DAW. The Channel Strip plugin comes with all versions of Pro Tools and is based on the EQ and Dynamics from the legendary Euphonic System 5 console. Channel Strip has six EQ stages that can operate in different modes. Let's look at filters. The Channel Strip plugin has two filters which default to high pass and low pass mode. Now these will filter out any frequencies above or below a set cutoff point which I can set here with the frequency control or directly in the graph. And I can also set the slope here, which determines how quickly the frequencies will roll off either side of the cutoff point. Now the first step of EQing is often to remove problems like a boomy low end or room resonances. And you'd normally do this before boosting frequencies. Let's have a listen to this vocal recording and I'm wanting to listen out for the headphone spill where you can hear the backing track coming through the vocal mic. But I don't know why you know that you told me why I can do this. So we can help to reduce this by using the high pass filter. Maybe you don't know what it's gonna pull out some of the bass and the kick drum. Sounds. I don't wanna tell you what I do then, but I wanna drive you from the side. The four main EQ bands on the Pro Tools Channel Strip plugin default to a bell curve mode, allowing you to boost or attenuate a specific range of frequencies to shape the tone. These EQs have three standard controls. Frequency sets the center point that the EQ takes effect. Gain sets your boost or attenuation. And Q sets the width of frequencies affected. Let's listen to this vocal recording. But I don't know why you know that you tell me why I 
So first I want to remove some of the boxy room tones. The best way to find the area that I want to affect is to boost and sweep the range. You can even listen to just this frequency band by pressing the speaker icon. You know that you tell me why I can do this when I don't fly this way. But now I've found the frequency that I want, I'm gonna cut. Next, we can improve the clarity and air in the vocal by boosting some of the high frequencies. The low and high frequency bands can switch to shelf mode which will affect everything above or below a certain frequency. Now it's important to A-B the results to make sure that we've succeeded in making this vocal more crisp and clear. But I don't know why you know that you tell me why I can do this when I don't fly this way. Maybe you don't know what I EQ plays an important role in creating space for each instrument in the frequency spectrum. This pad has a lot of energy in the low mids, which makes it sound rich, but so does the bass. When tones overlap, you get frequency masking where the sounds clash and lose clarity. In the low end, this is often described as muddiness, while higher frequency clashes sound harsh and unpleasant. I can use EQ to reduce some of the overlap in the low mids. Let's find the range that's overlapping. And I'll cut that. We'll boost some of the higher mid frequencies to bring out the quality of that pad. And let's just make up the gain a little bit. I'll A-B that and when I bring the EQ back in you should hear the bass is tighter and more defined and the pad gets its own space on top. Can I stay with you EQ can be used for special effects. A classic trick used to create interest and variety in music mixes is the telephone filter effect. I want to use this in the intro to this track I could use any EQ or filter plugin on my track for this, but in Pro Tools Studio, I can also choose to EQ specific clips in different ways using clip effects. With the clips selected, I can just click on clip effects here, and I see my EQ filter and dynamics from the channel strip plugin. Let's enable the filters, and we'll just use the high and the low pass filters to really narrow down to just the high mids. Make up the gain a bit with the trim. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to add some distortion and a short delay. And there's our telephone filter effect. There's a popular trick for getting a tight, punchy low end on your drums using the classic Poltec EQP 1A equalizer. Pro Tools Artist, Studio and Ultima all come with a plug-in version of this EQ, so you can try it for yourself. Okay, I'm going to apply the EQ directly to my drum bus. So let's do that and solo it. And this is with no effects applied. So this low end section is currently set to 60 hertz. I'm going to leave it there. You can also try it at 30. I'm going to apply a boost that's going to really boost the low end. Now the trick is we're going to bring up the attenuation. Now instead of just cancelling out the low end boost, this actually reduces the width of it and applies a dip in the low mids. Okay, let's just bypass that and listen to what we get. So we get an instant, tight, punchy low end on our drums. EQ is an essential part of mixing, letting you fix recording problems, balance your mix, and create interesting tonal effects.
tell you the truth, I say you 